This video is video three of the Gift of the Nile series. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Egyptian writing systems. Now, the Egyptian writing systems are some of the most recognized writing forms in the world, and we're going to be discussing that today. Now, they technically had two different languages. The first is called hieroglyphics, and you can actually see the hieroglyphics in the background of this picture. Hieroglyphics are logograms, meaning that they use pictures to tell stories or to tell, uh, to represent the image or idea they're trying to get across. As you can see here in this picture, uh, this would be the hieroglyphic symbols for father, mother, son, daughter, brother, or sister. As you can see, they are highly complex and not exactly simple in their design. These were used by the rich and the religious. You find these a lot on monuments, on religious texts, on scrolls of really, really important documents that one, when you wanted to show people you were rich and powerful and had connections with the gods, you used hieroglyphics. And it was believed back in the day that hieroglyphics even had magical powers. And we'll come back to this particular idea in uh, two videos from now. But writing hieroglyphics wasn't just something you would do to say hi to a friend. Uh, you used hieroglyphics very cautiously and very judiciously because uh, it was more than just writing to the Egyptians. Now, the second type of writing was called demotic. And this was a more common language used for businesses, daily life, and kind of everyday use. This is what the normal people, the everyday people, the slaves, the farmers would have spoken and the richer people among the lower rungs of society would have learned how to write in a uh, demotic text. Now, what did they write on? Uh, they invented something called papyrus. Now, the term papyrus actually refers to the papyrus plant that is used to make the scrolls. To the right, you see a picture of the papyrus plant that is found in vast quantities along the Nile River. And what they would do is they would take this plant, pluck it from the Nile, strip the outer casings, and then uh, lay the strips of papyrus in a crisscross pattern and then basically beat it with a hammer down into form and then allow it to dry out in the hot sun uh, brought to you by the Sahara Desert. So this papyrus is what they used for their scrolls, for their businesses, and they had a large abundance of this. Now we're very fortunate because thanks to Egypt's hot dry climate and lack of moisture in the air, a lot of papyrus scrolls have lasted these thousands of years for us to see perfectly preserved because of the hot and dry nature of the environment did not corrode or destroy the documents like we've had problems with in other ancient cultures. Now, how do we know what all these things mean? Well, there's this stone that we came across called Rosetta Stone. This was a stone that had messages written in Greek, Demotic, and Hieroglyphics dating back to around 196 BC. Now, this stone was found in a town that uh, gets translated modern day into Rosetta. And this stone was you know, lost in time, was found buried somewhere, uh, or got buried somewhere and then was found by the French in 1799. And by the 1820s, they had re-uncovered what hieroglyphics meant. Uh, they were able to use the Greek to figure out the demotic and then the ancient Greek to figure out what the hieroglyphics meant. And that allowed modern historians to be able to go and look at all the temples, to look at all the tombs, and to start to decipher what all of these beautiful hieroglyphic texts were that up until that point we had lost the meaning of what those words meant. With the fall of Egypt to Rome and with 
the ceasing of the use of the Egyptian temples, the knowledge of hieroglyphics was lost until Rosetta Stone, and we were able to once again decipher what those words meant.